Hello and welcome everyone to the third chapter of our Freecom full stack tutorial series. And today we are going to incorporate real time functionality inside our application using GraphQL subscriptions. So if you remember where we left off last time, that was we had a working chat window where we could type and send a message, but we would actually only see the message appear on the screen after refreshing the page. So, of course, this is not how we want our chat to function in the end. And that's why we want to build real-time functionality today. The first thing that we have to do in order to bring real-time functionality and subscriptions into our app is to add a new dependency to the project. And that's the subscriptions transport WebSockets package implemented by the Apollo guys. Heading over to a terminal, I'm simply going to install it using npm. And once this is added, we have to go and make a couple of changes to our setup for the Apollo client in index.js. Fast forwarding just a little bit and the dependency has been installed so that now we can go and use it in our code. I'm here in the index.js file where we have the configuration of the Apollo client from last week. So today we are going to extend this configuration to include subscriptions. First, we import the subscription client and the add GraphQL subscriptions functions from the package that we just added to the project. The next step is to instantiate the subscription client. And that looks as follows. We are using the subscription client and passing in a URL just like we did with the network interface down here. And what's important about this URL is that it follows a similar pattern as the URL that we're using for the regular GraphQL endpoint, in that you have to add your project ID from the GraphQL project to the end of it. What you could do as well, if you're not quite sure what this URL has to look like in your own project, you can go into the GraphQL console, click on the endpoints button, and then you've got the subscription tab right here where you also see the full URL that you have to incorporate into your project to access subscriptions. All right, so this is what the instantiation of the subscriptions WebSockets uh, client look, looks like. Now we have to adjust the network interface by uh, combining it with the WebSocket client that we created up here. So rather than passing the plain network interface to the constructor of the Apollo client, we're going to use the add GraphQL subscriptions function to combine the current network interface with the WebSocket client that we just instantiated. And then we change the network interface that we're passing to the Apollo client constructor and exchange it with a new one. So this is all you have to do to configure the Apollo client and uh, make it ready so that you can use subscriptions in your application. And before we go and create the first mutations and uh, subscriptions and code, I want to show you how you can debug and use subscriptions already in the playground. <clears throat> so again, I'm just uh, copying the endpoint for the simple API and paste it in the address bar of a browser to open up a playground for my project. And in here, I have already prepared a subscription. And this is what the subscription looks like. So we are using the subscription keyword in the beginning. And then we can say for what type we want to get uh, the subscription messages. So here we are specifying that we want to get new data whenever something changes on the message type. And then we can also specify the data that we want to have returned. Again, so that's the payload of our subscription. And this node refers to the new data. So this basically means that whenever a new message is being created, uh, that the ID and the text are going to be delivered for that subscription. The way how this is going to work, that you uh, click the play button in the middle, but then rather than seeing data on the right side right away, you only see this little loading indicator. So how can we now um, add data to the backend? Well, our uh, application is already connected. So if I send a message in our chat like this, 
and head back to the playground, we're actually going to see that this data now appeared in the playground as well. But sometimes we also might be interested in information about uh, changes when uh, information was deleted or updated. So for that, we can actually include the mutation field right here in the payload as well that will give us the information as to what exactly was happening in the mutation on the message type because a message could have been created, updated, or deleted. Let's go ahead and send a new message. <clears throat> ah, I actually have to stop and replay the um, subscription, so let's do it one more time. And now we see that the mutation field is also included in the, in the payload and that it was a created mutation. So here a new message was created. So now that we've got an idea as to what a subscription looks like, let's go ahead and use this knowledge in our project. And the first thing that we're going to implement is the chat component so that new messages can be rendered right after they are sent. So here is what the subscription looks like that we're going to use. Like in the playground, we're also using the subscription keyword and then we're giving a name to that subscription and also specifying a parameter. So this is the conversation ID for the particular message that we're interested in. And notice that similar to queries and mutations, we are using the GQL function to actually create a new JavaScript variable where we store that subscription. All right, so now we're doing something that we haven't done in the playground, but that's just an extension of what we did there. So we are using a filter and the AND operator so that we can incorporate two conditions for the subscriptions that we're interested in. And the first condition is that we're actually only interested in uh, created mutations. So we only want to get updates whenever a new message was created. We don't want to get updates when messages are deleted or updated. And then the second filter is where we're using the conversation ID that we're passing in as a parameter to the subscription. So we only want to get informed about new messages of that particular conversation. So the conversation that um, that is being rendered by the current chat component. And then the second part is simply the payload. So that's also similar to queries and mutations. And we've got the node field that we also saw in the playground. And then we're asking for all the properties that we are also requesting in the initial all messages query. All right, so with every message that is now being created in the backend, we're going to receive a notification with all the data that is contained in there. Let's now actually make use of this subscription to make sure that we're receiving the information about new messages. And for that, we are first going to add a new method to the chat component that is called subscribe to new messages. And we are calling it in component uh, did mount. So we want to make sure that we subscribe only once. And this is right before the, uh, the component renders for the first time. So we are using the component did mount lifecycle method of React components to subscribe to new messages. So let's take a look at the implementation of this method. So the very first thing is that we're calling subscribe to more on the all messages query. And recall that the all messages query is accessible through the props of our component only because we're wrapping our chat component with the GraphQL function and using the GraphQL function or higher order component to combine our chat component with the all messages query that we've got defined above. So this is why we can access the all messages query right here. And then we are calling subscribe to more. And as the first argument, we are passing in the subscription that we just defined on the top of the file. So this is the subscription that we defined right here. The next argument that we are passing to the subscribe to more function is the update query function. And this function works in the same way as a Redux reducer in that it takes in the old state and the new information 
that was received from the subscription. So in this case, this is going to carry the message that was created in the database. The way how we implement this method then, or this function then, is by first extracting the new message from the subscription data. And then we are going to add this new message uh, to the previous state of our all messages query. And then we are returning this like this. So this is the standard implementation of um, the update query function. Then we're also passing in variables. So remember that the subscription that we defined above took in the conversation ID as a variable. So here we are able to pass that variable explicitly. And then we can also specify what should happen um, when an error occurs during the subscription. And in this case, we just simply call the subscribe to new messages uh, method again and passing in the reference to the component. So this is also the explanation why we pass in this component reference in the first place. So in case that there is some, something wrong with the subscription, we can simply resubscribe to it again. So this is all we have to do to implement the functionality to make a new message appear on the screen right after it's sent. So let's go ahead and test it in our actual app. Back in the browser, I'll open the chat window, start a new conversation and send a message. And we see that this message is now being rendered right away. So this is the first part of the application that we need to implement. But then, of course, the problem that we have at the moment is that whenever we are sending a new message and we navigate back to the previous screen, the conversation list is not updated. So here in the conversation list, we want to have a preview of the last message that was sent. And we don't really have that here. So we are going to have to add a new subscription in the app component to make sure that we can also properly update the conversation list. So let's back over. So let's head back over to our IDE and update the chat component to also include a subscription so that we can update the conversation list. Head over to the app component first and add a new subscription there. Here is what the subscription looks like. So similar to what we saw in the chat component, we're filtering only for created mutations. But this time we're interested in all the messages from all conversations. So we spare the second condition uh, for the particular conversation ID because it might happen that a new conversation or that a new message gets sent in any conversation that we currently have in the conversation list. And then we specify the payload of the subscription. So all the data that we want to receive whenever the subscription fires. Next, similar to the chat component again, we have to add a um, uh, we have to add a method to our component where we can subscribe to new messages. So let's do that next. We're calling the method subscribe to new messages again. And this time it works a little bit differently because we're calling subscribe directly on the Apollo client that we have access to in the props. And recall from the last chapter, we only have access to the Apollo client in the props of our component because we're wrapping the component with the with Apollo function. All right, so we're calling subscribe on our Apollo client and passing in the subscription that we defined above as an argument. And this is now going to return an observable query where we can subscribe again and uh, passing in a next function where we can handle the new data. We're also passing in again an arrow function to specify what should happen when the connection breaks. And again, we are simply resubscribing. So next we have to implement this handle new messages method that I'm referring here. And this is actually going to receive as an input the subscription data that we also saw in the previous subscription already. So we've got the implementation of our handle new messages method right here. 
it takes in the subscription data. And the first thing that we have to do is to extract the conversation of the message. So in our list of messages, uh, of conversations, we have to figure out which one was the conversation that we need to update with the new message. Then we're making a copy of the existing conversations. And in our conversations list, so in all the conversations that are currently being displayed on the screen, we are looking for the conversation that we um, extracted up here. So this code is searching in the list of existing conversations, which one is the conversation where the new message was created. And then this find index function here returns the index of that conversation in the array. So we are using that index and simply replace the current conversation with the conversation that we received through the subscription. And then we're updating the state of our component. So this is what the implementation of our new handle message method looks like. The last thing that we need to do in order to implement or to receive this, the actual subscriptions is to subscribe uh, in a component in mount. So again, we are calling the subscribe to new messages function right here in component in mount, passing a reference to the app component uh, to the method. And that's all we have to do. So now let's go ahead and test the functionality. Uh, heading back to the browser and opening up a new conversation. And once the conversation is loaded, I can go ahead and type a message. It appears on the screen right away. And if I type a second one and we move back to the conversations list, we also see that this is the last message that is shown as a preview in the conversations list. All right, so this is all we wanted to implement today. We wanted to bring real-time functionality to our app by using GraphQL subscriptions. For that, we first changed the configuration of the Apollo client and included the subscription client that we combined into, uh, with the network interface and then configured the Apollo client to also be able to access the subscription endpoint. Next week, we're going to talk about authentication and permissions, making sure that users can only ever access their own conversations. I hope to see you next week.